we've seen in a few problems now, a couple of problems, that um, this is the equation satisfied by nodes, uh, by the potentials of the nodes in the graph, okay? It's uh, the fact that the potential at any node i is given by the average of the potentials of any adjacent nodes, okay? We call such a potential a harmonic potential because it turns out to be an important um, concept. As you saw, we've already seen that harmonic potentials occur both in uh, kind of probabilistic models of random journeys around tubes or other networks and also in the electric circuit problem. Okay, so we've seen these harmonic potentials arise. Now, these happen to have important consequences. So to show this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw um, a connected graph for you here, okay? And um, what I'm going to do is to make sure it's connected. I want to make sure I've got a connected graph. That'll do, okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to let, I've noticed that I've drawn some blue. And white. So the white ones are going to be called boundary nodes and the blue ones are going to be called interior nodes. So I take a connected graph, I isolate some of them that I'm going to be call boundary nodes and the others are going to be interior nodes, okay? Those are just names that turn out to be convenient later on. You're probably wondering why they're called boundary and interior. Well, boundary nodes, here's, here's the thing. Boundary nodes, the, this means the potential is specified. Okay? By me. I decide what the potential of the boundary node is. And then in the interior nodes, it's, they are, the potentials are harmonic. Okay, so that's the, that's the delineation between the two. At boundary nodes, I set the potential. At the interior nodes, the potentials have to be harmonic. So in my electric circuit problem, remember where I, when I set one node to be unit voltage and another node to be zero or grounded, those were the two boundary nodes. There were two boundary nodes in that case, and the rest would have been interior nodes according to this categorization. Okay. Let me just sh tell you about an important result known as the maximum principle for harmonic potentials. Okay? It's a very important result, and there's actually a minimum principle too, which I'll explain afterwards. So let M be the maximum value of the potential on a connected graph, just like the one I've drawn here. Okay, let me just give myself some more space. The result is then M is attained on a boundary node. Okay, it might be attained on all the boundary nodes, but it's definitely attained on the boundary, on a boundary node. Okay, let's just, it's easy to prove. Because let's, 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 let's look, use pink to denote type of node. Now look, if I actually let M be attained at a white node, then it's a boundary node and I'm done. There's nothing to prove. I've just supposed then that the M is attained at a boundary node, which means there's nothing to prove. So let's not worry about that particular case. The key problem here in, in establishing this maximum principle is to suppose I start here and suppose that the maximum is attained at an interior node. Okay, so that's the supposition. Suppose that that pink node, which is also blue, is an interior node, uh, the maximum uh, M is attained. So the potential there is M. Well, it's an interior node, which means it's harmonic which means this holds, which means that it, the potential there, which is M, is the average of all of the potentials of its neighbors. Now, in this particular picture, its neighbors are the crosses, and they are also blue nodes, so they're also interior nodes, okay? 
But it, can you see that if this is m, the maximum, the potentials at all of those five crosses have to also be capital M. They also have to attain the maximum value because if they had, first of all, they can't attain any value greater than M because it's the maximum value. And they also can't attain any value less than M because if any one of those five crosses, the potentials of those five crosses was less than M, then the average of those five crosses would be less than M. But it's not, it's equal to M by this. Okay, so I've just deduced that the value at all of the five crosses is also M. And you can see now that all of those are, are interior nodes as well. So again, by the same argument, all of each of those, the neighbors of each of those five crosses have also got to be at potential capital M. And you can see that because this is a connected graph, I can just keep repeating this argument, and because of the connectedness, I will eventually find an interior node that has a boundary node adjacent to it, okay, connected to it by an edge, which means that M will be attained at the boundary node. Okay, So I've just proved the maximum principle because if M is attained on the boundary, I'm done, and I've just proved that if M is attained inside, it's also attained at the boundary. So there's no doubt about it, the maximum value on a connected graph of a, of a potential is attained at a boundary node, a, bo a node where you set the potential. Okay. So what it means is, in practice it means kind of the following thing. If I set a bunch of potentials in a graph, I know that that's the maximum value of the potential that can ever be attained at any other node. Well, it's very easy, I think, for you to see now what the minimum principle is. It says that if little m of the potential on the connected graph, then m is also attained at the boundary. When I say boundary, I mean one of the boundary nodes. So that's the minimum principle. And the, the, the argument is exactly the same, except in everywhere I just said maximum, you replace by minimum and kind of go the other way. Not gonna go through that. Another thing, let me just start, a, maybe I start a new uh, slide here. There's something called a uniqueness principle too. So there's three principles, the maximum principle, the minimum principle, and the uniqueness principles, again, for harmonic potentials. Okay. So let's let Xi and Pi be harmonic potentials. And we know, I use Xi and Pi for, for a reason, potentials, right, on a given connected graph. You know why I've used Xi and Pi, because Xi is kind of like my circuit voltages and then Pi are my probabilities in the mini tube. And uh, the graph is my four node five edged graph that we've seen since lecture one. If I've got two harmonic potentials and we both, we know that both of them are harmonic, I've already established that for you. Then, they are, oh, right, with the same boundary potentials. By which I mean that we, you pick the same boundary nodes and you've got the same potentials set, set at those nodes, then they are the same. In other words, you can't have more than one harmonic potential satisfying given boundary data. Okay, how do you prove this? It's very easy. Let di be xi minus pi. Okay, where xi and pi are both harmonic potentials. Now, harmonic potential is the definition that it's it's the potential that's equal to the average of its neighbors. You can see, look, that just by the linearity of that condition of harmonicity, if I take two harmonic potentials and add them up or in this case, subtract them, I'm still going to end up with a harmonic potential. So this is also harmonic. 
DI is a new harmonic potential. But the boundary nodes The boundary nodes have di equal to zero because xi and pi, whatever the boundary data is, they have the same boundary data by assumption. So therefore, di will have zero boundary data at the boundary nodes. And now, by the minimum, maximum and the minimum principle for harmonic potentials, di is equal to zero everywhere. Okay? Because the, the maximum and minimum of di is attained on the boundary, but the only boundary values are zero, which means that the maximum and minimum of di are both zero, giving you no alternative but to have di zero everywhere. And that means that xi and pi are zero everywhere, which means that really is true that the uh, the harmonic potential solving the electric uh, circuit problem and the harmonic potential solving the probability uh, random journey problem are the same.